can't hear you. I said, I can't hear you. And I better explain what I mean by that. Climate change will rip apart, and is already ripping apart, the landscape of risk and opportunity through which all businesses need to find a path in order to survive and flourish. It will rip it apart and it will put it together again in a completely different way. The impacts of climate change will revalue assets, mostly downwards, and scramble in complex ways the forecasts that you need to make about the return you can expect on your investments. Uncertainty about the policy response to climate change will have the same effect, at least until we have a clear framework of policy in all the major economies. Who now can give a confident, forward estimate of the carbon price that you will need to factor into your decisions over the next 10 years? The urgent need to deal with that policy risk is why the Copenhagen meeting, one reason why the Copenhagen meeting is so critical. We know a lot more now than we did a year ago about how important it is to identify and be honest about the scale of the risks that we face. Behind the more immediately visible liabilities, the toxic debts that have quite rightly occupied so much attention as we try and stabilize and unblock the financial system, lurks the specter, perhaps more distant, but certainly in the end a bigger threat, the specter of climate risk and climate liability. The best tool, perhaps in the end the only tool, for mitigating that risk is your voice. The voice of those who determine where private capital is going to be invested and who understand better than governments ever can the conditions necessary for rational and successful investment decisions. Nobody, nobody in this country has done more to support business in finding that voice than His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales. Through the family of institutions and initiatives that he's sponsored and personally nurtured through this annual uh, summit and the network that supports it through business in the community, the corporate leaders group, the Cambridge program for industry, and through many of you personally, and so on. You've done essential work. But as I said, I still can't hear you. Your voice is not yet loud enough and your message not sharp enough. Now, seven months before Copenhagen, now is the moment to raise the roof. Ed Miliband, who will talk to you later, announced a momentous decision last week to bring forward the deployment of carbon capture and storage in our country. We can begin to see for the first time how we can get a zero emission electricity system in place in Britain within the next 20 years. That was a brilliant decision in my mind, as important as any step that any major national government has so far taken in building a low-carbon economy, but the need to accelerate the deployment of carbon capture and storage has been obvious, blindingly obvious, for many years. And despite the disinformation, so has the feasibility of doing that. There is no climate strategy without a carbon capture and storage strategy, not least because of the coal that will inevitably built, be burned in, in China and elsewhere. You should have created an overwhelming pressure for last week's decision to have been taken years ago. And the same still applies in many other coal burning economies where some of you have interests, some of your companies have interests, and where the same decision is yet to be taken. There has been far too much focus on the risks and costs of moving aggressively to low carbon. That is what, that is what has held up the carbon capture and storage decision in Britain. But you know that even in this recession, however long it lasts, the costs are affordable if public, pri public policy and private capital are linked together in the right way. We now need to hear much more about the opportunities, the jobs, the innovation, the benefits for competitiveness, and please whisper this in the ears of my colleagues at Her Majesty's Treasury, the prospect for reinvigorated and sustainable tax revenues that will, that will come from being a successful early mover on low carbon. I was in Korea, South Korea the other day. People there said to me, Obama is going to build a smart electricity grid. And you know what? Our Korean multinationals are going to build the smart appliances and the electric cars that will connect to America's smart grid. Because our competitors in Japan, 
in the United States and yes in Europe and not spotting the opportunity quickly enough and investing enough to grasp it before anybody else does. In Korea they probably worry more about China. China needs to shift its path, shift the direction of flow of the river of capital that is building the next stage of the Chinese economy more quickly and more sharply than any other major economy if we want to have a successful global response to climate change. And that's simply because China has been deploying capital and building infrastructure faster than anywhere else, and, and in, at the same time, boosting China's capacity to innovate and innovate at low cost. China has just built a high carbon economy from scratch in a generation. Who's to say that it won't build a low carbon one quicker than anybody else as it seeks to recover from the current crisis by moving faster than the rest of us up the value chain? That's what they're talking about in Guangdong province. So Copenhagen is not just the place where we will, where we will decide if we can muster an adequate global response to climate change by shaping and accelerating our respective national efforts beyond 2012. It's where we will decide whether we want an open global economy using energy and other resources ever more efficiently, an economy where our mutual interests trump those that divide us, a world of cooperation, not competition and conflict, or if we fail, whether we want the alternative, an ever accelerating scramble for energy, food and water, amplified by accelerating climate change. A world where you're either with us or against us. A world where nobody wins in the end. For business, it seems to me, that's a no-brainer. Uh, Ronan Dunn has just uh, said to me um, that we mustn't waste this crisis. It's been said before by others. Don't try to build a recovery and then build a low carbon economy. Build a low carbon recovery because if it's not low carbon, it won't last for very long. Ladies and gentlemen, don't assume that governments will know automatically what you need them to do to do that. Give us no choice. Thank you.